We also learn the types of responsibility center. Do you remember what are the types of responsibility center? Yes, please. What are the types of responsibility center? Profit center, investment center, engineer expenses, and committed expenses. Do you remember or uh, you have forgotten? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Remember. Remember, no? Okay. So, can you see my PPT? Yes, sir. What it is? Cost, profit, and investment centers. Yes. So, yesterday we have learned this cost, profit, and investment center. Okay. Now, today uh, we will be studying ROI. EVA, ROI stands for return on investment and EVA it is economic value addition, economic value addition. Okay. Now responsibility accounting system link lower level managers decision making authority with accountability for the outcome of those decisions. The term responsibility center. is used for any part of an organization whose manager or manager has control over and is accountable for cost, profit, and investment. So manager is responsible for cost, profit, or investment. The three primary types of responsibility centers are cost center, profit center, and investment center. Getting it? Follow or uh, shall I repeat again? No, please repeat. Yeah, please, uh, everyone listen. Responsibility center is used for any part of an organization. Now, yesterday I gave the example, like, like say, a video con company. So, in video con company, there are several products which are manufactured by video con company. What are the products which are manufactured by video con? Yes. You tell me what are the product range under a video con? So okay. TV fridge. Yes, TV fridge, washing machine. Washing machine be na video con ka. Yes, sir. Uh, music system. Now, suppose if you pick up one product, say uh, freeze. So for freeze uh, division. There is a separate manager. There is a separate manager appointed by Videocon company. Now, in regards to the uh, TV, color TV. So, can you think? Uh, do you uh, feel that uh, the manager who is respond, uh, who is looking for a fridge, the same manager is uh, working for a TV also, or there will be a different manager? What do you think? There is a different manager or the same manager who looks after freeze and TV. What is your guess? Yes, please. Hello. So separate be sakte hai and same be sakte hai. Mera jaise hai. Actually, same to me because uh, TV altogether it is a different product. And washing machine, it is altogether different product. So we can we cannot expect that one manager should deal with TV as well as a, a washing machine, because the the technology is different, and product is altogether different. So we cannot put uh, all responsibility to one manager. Manager, actually, in uh, MNC, what happens uh, where there is a variety of uh, products, there is a range of product. So the company appoints separate manager for each and every product. Please understand this. Okay. Am I audible?
हेलो यस सर सो फॉर रिसोर्सिस सेंटर इज यूज फॉर एनी पार्ट ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हुज मैनेजर हैज कंट्रोल ओवर एंड मैनेजर ही इज नॉट जस्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कलर टीवी और मैनेजर इज नॉट जस्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग वॉशिंग मशीन he has control over and and is accountable for cost profit or investment to ye teeno cheeze usko sambhalna hai kaun si kaun si teen cheeze cost profit and investment ye teeno bhi usko sambhalna hai and that is why now cost center yesterday we learned in cost center there is a input and what is that input what is that input input is raw material yes. labor and with the help of raw material labor manager process it so in between there is a process and uh, finally they produce finished goods that is nothing but the output so input and output there is a optimal relationship there is a formal relationship between input and output whatever input we are putting into it we expect the same amount of uh, output and if it is not achieved by that uh, particular division then manager will be asked reason why it is not been achieved what are the reason then manager will have to justify it he has to answer uh, for this uh, question or for this query and uh, not only this cost but the manager will be asked for profit also because uh, within the input he has to produce uh, a particular thing yesterday i gave the example like suppose if uh, 75 rupees is uh, uh, input and output is 100 rupees so 100 minus 75 25 is nothing but the profit so he has to show that profit and the third part is investment now what is investment investment is nothing but the all kind of assets now can you give me the example of assets what are the assets generally company employees what are the assets yes please ah employees are the assets also employees are also asset okay and apart from employees what are the uh, uh, infrastructural facilities machine building furniture these are also assets no your point is correct employees are also asset but employees are human being but apart from this human being company will have to have machines machinery without without machinery can we produce a tv or washing machine without machinery we cannot no, we cannot so machinery is also important so uh, so this is the example of investment so investment center whatever investment you are putting in in the form of machinery uh, raw material and method that has to be utilized in a efficient manner in a effective manner and if you if you are not using this uh, investment in a efficient manner then it will indicate that your investment is idle uh, company is not using investment up to the mark so that kind of uh, objection will be raised by auditor so that is why these are the primary types of center that is cost center profit center and investment center and this these are nothing but the responsibility center what are these responsibility center cost profit and investment center are all known as responsibility centers now i hope you are clear with this uh, responsibility center any doubt in this uh, slide any doubt
in respect of cost center, profit center, and investment center. I said that in cost center, input and output, there is a formal relationship between input and output. There is an optimal relationship between input and output. Whatever input is being given, we process that input and we expect uh, the specific output. So input and output, there is a, a relationship. And now in regards to the profit center, again, whatever inputs we are putting into that, uh, we cannot match with the output, but we expect, but we expect, but we, we can't match. And yesterday I gave the example of profit center, like say, uh, revenue or uh, marketing department. Now marketing department asks for advertisement and uh, for advertise advertisement, company will have to spend, but not necessarily that whatever amount is being spent by a company on the advertisement, there will be sale of a company. Normally we expect that because of advertisement, sale will happen. But we can't give guarantee that just because of advertisement, the company has achieved sale. Because uh, there are also other factors, like say quality of the product, then how you are delivering that uh, product to your customer, then what is the after sale service. So these are all some uh, other factors which are also essential to make a sale, to happen sale. Sale, it is not just happened because of advertisement. Now, even in the TV, we see there are many advertisements of different products, like say soap and uh, uh, eatable things. There are many advertisements. Uh, we say we watch in the advertisement. So just because of advertisement, are you purchasing uh, those products? Tell me. Just you saw the advertisement in TV and you are purchasing. Does it happen like this? Can you answer my question? Hello? Whenever you see advertisement in the TV, just because of advertisement, you have purchased product. Hello? Yes, sir, sometimes. Sometimes it happens. But can you give me guarantee? Just because of अगर आपने टीवी पे ऐड देखा मर्सिडीज का एंड यू वेंट टू द मर्सिडीज शोरूम एंड यू परचेस मर्सिडीज कार ऐसा होता है क्या कभी नो सर आपने कार एडवर्टाइजमेंट देखा और आप गए तुरंत एंड यू हैव परचेस मर्सिडीज ऐसा नहीं होता है ऐसा नहीं होता है तो मार्केटिंग इज द वन एग्जांपल फॉर प्रॉफिट सेंटर Another example is a legal department, legal. So legal में आप जो भी input डालते हो, what what are the inputs in legal department? You have to appoint uh, advocate, then uh, you have to give some uh, equipment to the legal department, like say computer, uh, chairs, table, uh, cupboard, and so on. So this is nothing but the inputs you are giving to the legal department. Now, to the legal department, can you link profit to legal department? Now you tell me, your company is having separate legal department. So legal department, your company has advocate upon it, it has a computer, it has a cupboard, a table, a chair, a sofa, AC, everything has given it. So you can connect with profit with the legal department? Now you tell me. हेलो हेलो आई मैं ऑडिबल यस सर तो कैन यू लिंक प्रॉफिट टू द लीगल डिपार्टमेंट यू टेल मी आंसर मी Can you link uh, profit to the legal department? Or shall I give another example? If you are not understanding this, may I give another example? Do you have? 
Yes, sir. Okay, now listen. Now, in your company, there is a research and development department. We call it R and D. R and D stands for what? R and D का मतलब क्या है? Research and development. Research and development. So, research and development department. What it does? He conducts survey and he collects feedback from customer. And on the basis of feedback, they uh, go for research. And on the basis of research, they make some changes in the product. Maybe two wheeler, hai, four wheeler, hai, yeah, soap, hai, uh, biscuit, hai, jo bhi hai. they make some changes in the product. And after having their changes, sometimes uh, can you uh, feel that whatever changes they do, people will accept that changes and they will purchase. Sometimes, yes. Yes, sometimes whatever changes. Uh, which are suggested by research and development department, people they don't like that changes. Take example of even two wheelers. Sometimes there is a change in the style of uh, uh, headlight. There is a change in the style of indicator. There is a change in the style of seat cover. Seat. So yes, are is what change Sometimes customer they don't like. Simply they reject. They, they don't like that style. So, this is what is Whatever uh, suggestions suggested by research and development department, there is no guarantee that people will like those changes. Sometimes they like, most of the time they don't like. This happens. But it doesn't mean that you should not have your research and development department. Because if you do not have research and development department, then you may not be able to get the new idea. From the market. In order to get the new idea, you have to have a research and development department. And research and development department, you have to have a people, then you have to pay salary to, to, to those people. You have to provide them equipment like computer, then uh, software. So th these are the uh, costs uh, which is being done by company. And after spending this cost, there is no 100% guarantee that your research and development development department will earn profit out of that uh, expenses. Sometimes the ideas are liked by a customer. Sometimes they don't like. Most of the time they don't like. But apart from this uh, restriction, restriction and uh, say constraint, company how to have research and development department, company have to have legal department. So this department, we there is no specific relationship or there is no formal relationship input and output because there are some external factors which has influence over this department. In legal department, external factor is court. Now there is a high court, there is a session court, then high court, and above there is a Supreme Court. So these are the external forces. Your legal department is there, but it is being it is having influence of session court, high court, and uh, supreme court. Your legal department cannot uh, command this session court, high court, and uh, supreme court. They will have to follow this uh, rules and regulation and uh, the law. Uh, which we follow. Within that law, they will have to work and above all, high court will decide whether your company's decision is right or wrong. They will have their judgment. If you observe in corporate, there are uh, many disputes which are being taken to the industrial court, industrial court. And then industrial court, they investigate the entire matter and on the basis of investigation, then they, they declare their judgment. Uh, there are act like say Factories Act, Companies Act, Labor Act. So this act, within this act, your legal department is pleading a case on behalf of company. But after all, session court gives the judgment and not your legal department. Your legal department just plead the case. Are you getting my example? Your legal department just plead the case. Now here, 
How many students are from HR, uh, HR specialization? May I know? Who is attending from HR? Yes, please. Give me a response. Anyone is here from HR? HR specialization? HR ka kona is me? HR, human resource management specialization. Who is from HR specialization? No one? Moira Chavan, uh, what is your specialization? Finance, sir. Finance, okay. Rutuja, your specialization? Rutuja? Baraugar, Rutuja Baraugar. What's your specialization, Rutuja? Rupali, your specialization? Rupali, okay. Anyone here from uh, HR specialization? So HR specialization students know that there is a legal department and in legal department, even HR persons are also appointed along with the advocate. HR persons are also appointed because in HR manager supposed to have uh, MBA from HR and they should also have knowledge of uh, legal uh, aspect. Like say, sometime HR manager is uh, completed say DTL course, DLL course, diploma in labor law, diploma in taxation law, diploma in taxation law, uh, which is a part of finance student, and DLL that is diploma in labor law, which is the part of uh, HR manager. Now, in case uh, now uh, here there are some students who are from uh, finance background. So even they can think of a detail course. It is a diploma, diploma in taxation law. So this diploma in taxation law will help you if you are appointed in a finance department. So some legal aspects are involved in finance department also. Same time, some legal aspects are also involved in HR department. So if you are heading HR department, please uh, uh, just uh, having a mere qualification of MBA HR may not help you. You should also learn some legal aspect like say DLL. Now if you are heading a finance department, so just having MBA finance uh, will not serve the purpose. Along with, you should also have some legal aspect and for that legal aspect, go for detail course, Diploma in Taxation Law. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Hello? Okay. Now, let's uh, go to the next slide. Can you see this slide? Yes, sir. Return on investment. In short, it is known as ROI. And ROI, it is being calculated uh, on the basis of this formula. Now, let me tell you, uh, in your uh, paper that is a uh, Enterprises performance management, there will be no numerical, only theory questions are expected, only theory. Okay, and no numerical. But if you are asked theory question, you have to mention this uh, formula. You have to mention formula in your answer. So let us learn the formula ROI equals to net operating income divided by average operating assets. Net operating income divided by average operating assets. Now, net operating income is what? Income before interest and taxes, EBIT, which we call as the EBIT. ROI equals to EBIT, you can say EBIT divided by uh, assets, average operating assets. Now, assets, what do you mean by assets? That is a cash balance. It is also uh, your current assets. Cash is current asset, now. Hello? Cash and bank balance is current assets or fixed asset? Now you are finance student, no? So answer me. Cash and current bank. asset. Current asset. So assets means here current assets and fixed assets. Both the assets 
we have to consider that is asset so cash balance bank balance account receivable that is uh, your uh, debtors inventory that is our closing stock inventory plant and machinery plant and equipment means plant and machinery and other productive assets like say land building furniture these are also productive assets so you have to take the total of all assets so income ebit divided by assets what does it mean that how efficiently company is using assets to generate income that is the meaning of this roi return on investment how much return we are earning on the basis of investment that is the outcome of this roi and your roi should be higher and higher if it is higher then it is good for company that is the indication i repeat if it is higher roi it is good for any company because it indicates that company is using their investment in a efficient manner and earning it so that is the indication of roi and uh, what do we expect roi should be higher or lower hello sir higher roi should be higher higher, higher. now suppose if ir if your roi is lower then as a manager you will be asked that uh, increase your roi this task will be given to you increase your roi if roi is low then naturally top management will ask you that uh, increase this roi now as a manager again you will have to develop strategy you will have to have your own plan that how to increase roi how to increase roi now please understand this is not just theory part but whenever uh, you will be working with company in any corporate that time again this task will be given to you yes, sir our company's roi is going down and down year by year so we are appointing you uh, can you suggest us that how to increase our roi so that time you have to apply this mba knowledge so this part is also useful so from your career point of view am i correct or not if you are asked by your top management to increase roi that time you have to apply this knowledge so this knowledge is useful or it is not useful sir it is useful useful now let us uh, understand that how to increase roi uh, this slide any doubt may i go to the next slide now how to increase roi any doubt for assets any doubt for this income this income is nothing but the ebit ebit stand for uh, earning before interest and taxes earning before interest and tax before we pay interest and taxes that earning is being considered here and assets means all assets like current assets and fixed assets all type of assets may i go to the next slide now yes sir okay now i will show you the, this slide and then you go to, go to go through this slide and then i i will explain uh, maybe after a, a minute but, but you have to observe this slide okay observe this slide
So, may I know what are the three ways? What are the three ways to increase ROI? Now, just now we have learned the importance of ROI and a formula ROI also. Formula of ROI. Now, as I give the case case slide that if you are appointed as a manager and your company's ROI is going down and down every year, and you have been given this task that to increase ROI. So, what are the three ways to increase ROI? So, increase sales, reduce increase sales. expenses. So, so, is it possible uh, for your company? This is possible, na? To increase sales? Yes, sir. Yes, it is possible. So, please remember this. If you are appointed as a manager and if you are asked to increase ROI, first thing you have to highlight that. Can we increase sale? So you have to ask your sales team that, uh, and you have to give the target to your sales department that uh, henceforth the sale should be uh, like this. So you have to increase sale. Number one. Number two. Reduce the expenses. So is it possible reducing expenses of a company, or it is not possible? Reducing expenses is possible or not possible? Reduction in cost is possible or not? Hello. Reduction is cost is possible or not? Yes. Yes, it is possible. Reduction in cost. Nowadays, suppose if your company is having, say, transportation facility, uh, then cafeteria. Now, in order to run a uh, transportation and a cafeteria, if you are having uh, your own uh, buses and you are having your own restaurant, so that cost can be reduced. How it can be reduced? Can you tell me how it can be reduced? Justify me. How it can be reduced? Nowadays, how IT companies are reducing the cost of transportation? IT companies, how they are reducing the cost of transportation? Have they reduced cost of uh, uh, transportation or uh, they are increasing cost of production? Uh, this sorry, transportation. IT companies. Are they increasing cost of uh, transportation or are they decreasing cost of transportation? What is your experience? Hello? See, earlier, even the manufacturing companies like say Bajaj company in Pune, they were having their own uh, buses and uh, those buses were using to transport their employee from uh, their residence to company side and again from uh, after uh, the work complete again uh, the same employees are being uh, given facility of bus from company to, uh, factory location to their residence but today if you see the working style of bajaj they are not having their own buses now they have outsourced the transportation department out outsource same with uh, canting also, canting. Canting is being outsourced. Outsourced means the contract is given. Contract is given. So they don't have to see the availability of raw materials. They don't have to appoint a chef and uh, uh, workers to serve, serve the food. Everything is uh, outsourced. So this way, Bajaj company has reduced in respect of transportation, Bajaj company has reduced in respect of uh, catering or cafeteria expenses. So these are the example of reducing expenses. Reduce expenses. Number three, reduce assets. Even if your assets, uh, if your company has uh, employed too much assets, so as a manager, you have to think of, can we reduce uh, some part of assets? 
and if it is possible then uh, go for that remedy go for that solution why not to reduce some assets and if it is being reduced finally your investment in terms of asset will come down and if investment of asset if it is come down naturally the cost will decrease cost will come down and ultimately if cost is coming down because of reduction in investment your roi will increase slightly and this way you can work upon in order to increase roi as i told you that uh, higher and higher roi it indicates the sound position of company higher and higher roi it indicates the efficiency of company it indicates that the company's management is good enough in terms of utilization of their assets that is the indication and if you want to continue with this indication that increasing roi manager will have to work on these three fronts that is sales they have to increase sales they have to reduce expenses and they have to reduce assets and here uh, marketing department is involved then reducing expenses your finance department hr department as well as production department all three departments are involved in reducing expenses now in the production department also if unnecessary if there is if there is a wastage of raw material that wastage of raw material should be controlled so that that will uh, result into the reducing expenses so production manager is also involved in this uh, second task that is reducing expenses reducing assets now here again all managers are involved so this way this is the combined activity for each and every department if each and every department comes together and if they decide and if they follow the instruction which are given by top management naturally top management is also involved here top management will observe all this uh, area and then they will decide they will have a meeting with all these managers and all together they will see this uh, three things that is increasing sale reducing expenses and reducing assets and ultimately right from your lower level management middle level management top level management they will uh, see in increase in roi so this is a combined effort this is all together effort it is not a effort of only top management i am not saying that it is the effort of uh, middle level management or it is the level, effort of uh, lower level management it is the efforts of all types of management whether it is lower middle or top management all three level of management sh should involved in this activity and then they can achieve in increasing roi so from the examination point of view if you are asked about roi and eva please do remember these three slides i am again i i am sharing this slide this is last slide this is second one that is a formula and uh, this is the first one a responsibility center that is cost center profit center and investment center so this was about roi so today in this session we have completed roi return on investment if you have any doubt you are free to ask me otherwise we will end the today session if any doubt for roi that is return on investment short note is expected on this uh, topic short note for two or three months roi so if you are asked short note please remember this uh, formula roi equals to ebit divided by assets and then how to increase roi these three points you have to remember increase in sale reduces of expenses and reduces of assets assets means current assets as well as fixed assets how to reduce so these three points should be highlighted in your short roi if any doubt you may ask Any doubt? No, sir.
Okay, in this session, we will study EVA, economic value addition, EVA. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you.